Right, so here we're going to talk about the different sources of reactive oxygen species. So again, oxygen toxicity is bad for the cell, and depending on what, how much is there, the cell can either deal with it and neutralize it, or it can cause damage to the cells and potentially lead to death of the cells. So there are some sources. We have endogenous sources, which are natural during the cellular processes, such as your, in your mitochondria when you do oxidative phosphorylation, respiratory burst in your um, immune cells, intracellular enzymes such as exanthane oxidase, like oxygenases, auto-toxication auto of metabolites, transition metals. Your liver has to deal with a lot of xenobiotics that can cause or generate oxygen um, radicals. Exogenous is going to be also radiation, toxins from the environment, cigarette smoking, different drugs and xenobiotics. So one of the major sources naturally is going to be coenzyme Q in the electron transport chain. And coenzyme Q is going to transport electrons from complex 1 to 3, or complex 2 to 3, or other introductions of electrons into the um, inner membrane of the mitochondria. Now remember, coenzyme Q is able to move freely in the membrane, and when it has its electrons, if oxygen is present, it can grab those electrons from coenzyme Q, as shown here. Typically, your coenzyme Q would move it again from um, complex 1, which is your NIH NADH dehydrogenase, to the iron sulfur centers of your complex 3. And then complex 3 will eventually transmit it to complex 4. And in complex 4, the oxygen picking up um, the hydrogen will generate water, which is not toxic. However, this side step here of where free oxygen can grab an electron can generate our oxygen radical. Now there are many sources in the body that can generate uh, reactive oxygen species. In general, anytime you see the movement of electrons, you should automatically think it has the potential to create radical oxygen species. We have a set of enzymes called the P450 monooxygenases. These are going to be required to detoxify organic compounds such as alcohol, drugs, um, toxic chemicals, etc. There is also peroxidases that generate hydrogen peroxide, and this is going to be a normal process if you have very long chain fatty acids, and this occurs in peroxisomes, so that's again another natural way to make reactive oxygen species. And in general, your oxygen can pick up four electrons and generate two water molecules. It can also interact with sulfur groups and generate your hydrogen peroxide. Monooxygenases are going to form um, radicals. We have here our P450 enzymes. They're going to be associated with NADPH. And so they're going to move electrons. So here you have some sort of species, um, R, some group with oxygen, and you're going to generate water um, and add an oxygen to that, um, oxidize that group. And again, in this case, you're moving around um, your electrons. Another source of um, chemicals in the environment. So carbon tetrachloride is used in dry cleaning. And so if people are exposed to carbon tetrachloride, their cytochrome P450 enzyme in the liver must deal with this toxin. And in doing so, this is going to form a free radical, and this is, has been linked to hepatocellular necrosis. Basically, your radical will leak out and initiate a chain reaction of your lipids, especially the polyunsaturated lipids. Those are common targets for your free radical damage, and this will damage your endoplasmic reticulum membrane, your plasma membrane, can damage your mitochondria membrane, and eventually will lead to swelling and death of that hepatocyte. Now hydrogen peroxide is going to be generated normally and is going to be found in the ER mitochondria and peroxisomes. We have enzymes such as monamine oxidase which is going to degrade dopamine, and by degrading dopamine, it's going to generate hydrogen peroxide. 
We also have fatty acids that have to be digested in the peroxisome. And so there's a peroxisomal oxidase that always generates hydrogen peroxide. And this is typically those very long chain fatty acids. In purines, purines need to be degraded. And this is going to occur via xanthine oxidase. And xanthine oxidase, again, can make radicals, reactive oxygen species. This is thought to lead to um, Ischmann reperfusion injury. Um, and intermediates of icosanoids. Icosanoids are important in your immune cells, immune system. They're going to form leukotrienes and prostaglandins, and they're going to use or form lipid peroxides as intermediates. Now another source is going to be radiation. Radiation will generate our hydroxy radical. Um, this can be through x-rays, radioactive chemicals, or cosmic rays. And just basically you have water molecules. We have a lot of water in our body and these rays will generate our hydroxy radical and a hydrogen atom. And again, the hydroxy radical does not last very long. As long as it's neutralized, um, you're, you'll be fine. Now what happens with these radicals is a major target is going to be our lipids, especially the unsaturated fat, um, fats. So here we have a lipid that has um, is unsaturated. And so what's going to happen is that hydroxy radical is going to remove an electron from your um, lipid and it's going to generate a um, a radical carbon. So you're going to have a carbon that has an electron now, a free electron. And so you're going to have this lipid that now has this free electron and it's going to cause a chain reaction. And so you're going to have oxygen, for example, which loves electrons and it's going to bind to that free um, and, um, electron and perform or form a peroxy radical. So this is the peroxy radical. And then of course you can get reduction of that and form a lipid peroxide. But at this point, that lipid that's in the membrane is most likely going to be removed and there is going to form a gap that needs to be filled in by a new lipid. And so this is just one mechanism that is uh, showing how peroxidation um, of our lipids can cause damage and it again occurs primarily at these unsaturated fatty acids. So if you have too much lipid uh, peroxidation, you're going to get the lipids damaged and you're going to get release of um, an intermediate malon dialdehyde, which is right here, MDA. And this will be released into the blood, and this is an indicator of free radical damage. So this can be measured in a clinical lab and would indicate that there is radical damage in the person. Now, one of the things your body uses free radicals for is to try to kill bacteria. Bacteria have lipid membranes, and so just like our membranes, they're going to be highly susceptible to radical damage. And so your phagos phagocytes, including neutrophils and macrophages, which eat bacteria, will release these radicals in sort of a compartment in hopes that these radicals will damage the microbe and kill the microbe. This is going to occur, um, again, inside of the actual cells. Um, and then the, you have NADPH, which NADPH oxidase will generate your um, oxygen radical, and then this can form hydrogen peroxide inside of this um, endosomal compartment within your, your macrophage or neutrophil. And then inside of your macrophage or neutrophil, you have myeloperoxidase, which will generate um, another chloride radical, which can target the bacterium. Or through a Fenton reaction, you can generate a hydroxyl radical, which can target the bacterium. Or if there's nitrogen oxide present, you can create a nitrogen oxide species that can then target the bacterium. Now, hypochlorous acid um, is going to be formed by the immune system, and this again can destroy the bacteria within seconds. Um, our myeloperoxidase um, is going to contain two heme 
like centers. So this is the myeloperoxidase, and it gives it a green color. And this is the green color you see in pus when bacteria is present. The radicals are going to obviously contribute to inflammation. Uh, we have immunoglobulin type G proteins in our body and in rheumatoid arthritis. Um, these get partially oxidized and this improves their binding to rheumatoid antibody which then um, lodges into the, um, the um, nerves, the um, joints and causes um, arthritis. Also, strokes, myocardial infarctions are going to increase phagocytosis presence, and the phagocytes are removing the dead cells, but they also increase damage because they are producing radical oxygen species.